Okay, so do you remember that Australian politician the other day who was bragging about getting anime banned, specifically manga banned from the retailer in Australia, Kinokinu? Well, Bep Delta, shouts out to them, Shizu, made a thread on Twitter, more so a tweet, talking about that incident, and the retailer, Kinokinu, has actually responded to that tweet. I'm going to show you what they have to say, and it's actually really interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about Australian law in this video because what they said kind of conflicts with information we had from a few months ago. Let's get into it. Let me also give a shout out to GameWizard02. Thank you for the news tip, buddy. Because this response from Kinokinu kind of seems like it's gone under the radar a little bit. You'll see that in a moment when we scroll down. So here's what Bep Delta says. Basically raises the issue talking about what I mentioned already. This retailer, the manga banning, politician, Australia, you get the idea. And says, if you don't agree with the decisions, please consider sending a respectful mail to the vice president of Kinokinu with your concerns. Especially if you are from Australia, messages in Japanese are welcome too. Here is his mail. And we scroll down and look at this. We actually, oh, I got to scroll it further. Well, hold up in a moment. <laughs> now look at this. We have Kinokinu responding. And here's what they say. Thank you so much for your feedback regarding the reports about manga removal in our store. We appreciate your frustration regarding this and would like to explain our position further. Please read below. And like I said a moment ago, this will get into some Australian law, which actually conflicts with prior information. I'm not an expert in Australian law, but we'll get to that in a moment. Continuing, they say, We completely understand your concern based on the belief that Kinokinu has quote-unquote caved to the demands of some politicians and become censors. But please know it is not the case, nor that simple. When these titles were brought to the attention of the classification board, that's what you're going to need to keep in mind, classification board, again, more on that in a moment, by some politicians, it fell to them to decide if the titles needed to be officially submitted for classification before we are allowed to sell them. The determination is based on whether the titles contain depictions or descriptions that may be found to cause issue to some. And let me scroll again. There we go. As we import them into Australia to sell them to you, we are considered to be responsible for ensuring that they are submitted to the board. But in order to have them classified, we would need to pay a fee for each title, the cost of which made the process price prohibitive for us. Now, that's something we might fall back to in a moment. The, uh, uh, the talk, the discussion that they leave there about the price. They say the board, who have actually been very supportive in guiding us through the process, yeah, big X to down on that. If they're supportive of guiding you through, it's probably because, well, yeah, they get paid to have these things submitted and reviewed, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think they're actually trying to be helpful in the least. I think it's a very uh, cumbersome, very weird process that they have and they're making you go through to begin with. So from the get-go, I don't really, uh, you know, X to doubt. Now, let's finish this up. They say, indicated that some of the titles would likely be fine for unrestricted sale. Others might have restrictions apply and very few would be refused classification but some apparently would, and they go on to say, however, they would need to go through the official process for these determinations to be made. Uh, let me just remove my uh, webcam now. It's blocking the last part of this. Give me one moment. There we go. Should the titles remove official classification, we would be more than happy to put them back on our shelves and offer them for sale again. Ideally, the publishers would submit them to the board for classification, which would allow all books and comic stores in Australia to sell them without fear that they are breaking the law. So please don't think that we have just bowed to political pressure. We have actually acted as the law requires, no more, no less. And here's the thing with that. This is a segment from comicbook.com, but there are plenty of outlets that have pretty much the same exact coverage on this topic that would corroborate this if you want to go with a different source. They're all pretty much the same for this topic. So this was, again, going back to a few months ago when we had that committee discussion hearing with uh, Sterling Griff. Let's read this. It says, Margaret Anderson says it is not the job of the board to assess genre type when it comes to ratings. For anime in particular, the classification board is not responsible for assessing whether a show depicts quote unquote real people. She did say she's been long aware of the complaints which Griff shared with his colleagues because, again, Griff was one of the first senators to really hit the news, so to speak, here in the West with going after anime and manga in Japan, excuse me, in Australia, not Japan, in Australia. Although apparently uh, this Banaros woman is actually trying to go after Japan as well. More on that at the end of this video, though. Let's continue. Here's the really important part. Uh, currently, Australian classification law does not extend to manga which is a huge issue with the current circumstance when they're claiming that it does. Kinokinu is making it seem like, and I suppose the politicians are as well, the ones who have gone after Kinokinu, like Benaros, I suppose, to my understanding. Let me be very, very clear with that. I'm not an expert in Australian law. This is to my rudimentary understanding of what's going on here. 
But you can see, even with the rudimentary understanding, that there is a glaring issue. The caveat, of course, is if the law changed in the last three months or so, seems unlikely. And I haven't seen anything, uh, you know, actually backing that up. Now, maybe I just didn't find any news about that, but I have yet to see that so far. I have yet to see any news about that law being changed to affect written uh, works like comics and manga. So they end it with this. Anime is classified under the same umbrella which films in Australia are rated. So apparently, yeah, uh, anime could be held to the standards of this classification board, but manga shouldn't be, again, unless something changed. One more segment from comicbook.com. They write... The board is aware that a campaign has been launched about the sale of Japanese manga and anime in Australia, and that in the context of the government's review of classification regulation, this issue has been raised. The board welcomes this review. Again, I haven't seen anything confirming that they've actually made changes to the way this board functions yet, though. And I think that's terrible. If they really have changed the way the board functions, why is there not more news covering that? You see Australian news covering the situation with this politician uh, getting, you know, manga banned from Kanokan U. I see a lot of coverage on that. And, you know, it almost seems to me like this is just a PR stunt, to be honest, from this politician. Uh, let's get into that now. From ABC Net AU, Connie in Japan with Kazuko Ito. Connie Benaros meets with Kazuko Ito, the secretary general of the Japanese human rights group Human Rights Now. And they have this like photo op thing going on as well. And there are other articles covering this topic from February where it's similar. It shows these two women talking, going over papers, and it's like a whole photo op thing. I, I really get the vibe that they care more about PR than they actually do about helping kids. Here is another example from a different article now, also from ABC AU though. And you can see it's now three women here uh, at the table. Connie Benaros facing the camera, of course. And the topic of discussion is not really the main point to this. The point of this is, again, to me, it comes off like a photo op. I mean, how do they get these pictures and everything? It's like, it's like they plan to meet somewhere. They call up the media. And they're like, by the way, we're going to be talking about these issues at this location. You want to, you know, send over your media team and cover this and do a little write up, get some pictures of us and say something nice about us. Almost like they care more about that than actually solving the issues that they are pretending to care about. Maybe not pretending, but to me, I'm skeptical. And finally, moving away from the PR stuff back to the main topic at hand here with Kanoki and you and the classification board. We have more information here from, again, ABC AU, where they say distributors choose whether material is classified. While all videos pass through the classification board, it only looks at comic books if they are submitted, and it is up to the comic books distributors to decide if it needs to be classified. So who, what's going on here? Has the law changed in the last few months? Unlikely for the reasons I already mentioned, but possible. Is Kanokin you lying to the fans? Possible. Would Kanokin you actually lie to the fans and, you know, uh, try to avoid backlash from caving into these politicians? Are they trying to play the middleman? Are they trying to not get backlash from the politicians and not get backlash from the fans? Because they're claiming, you know, that they had to go through this process, but apparently they didn't. So why did they submit these manga to the classification board if they didn't have to? Something's not adding up. So let's go back to Kinokin Yu's statement one last time at the end of the video here with all the information we have now and skim through it and see where things really aren't adding up. Something's not right here. Kinokin Yu says, once more, thanks for the feedback. We appreciate your frustration. We understand your concern. Uh, we have not, you know, caved into the demands of politician. It's a complicated situation. And here's uh, where we're going to read the full thing. When these titles were brought to the attention of the classification board by some politicians, so someone brought these titles, you know, uh, so someone saw the, whoa, okay, that whole thing just highlighted itself. That was weird. But some people brought the, I lost my train of thought there. Some politicians saw these titles that apparently weren't submitted to the classification board and then, you know, took them to the classification board and said they need to be officially submitted. But according to what we've already read, it's not up to the politicians to decide that if it's works of like comic or manga work, uh, basically non-video material. It should be up to the retailer. So that doesn't really make much sense. They go on to say, this determination is based on whether the titles contain depictions or descriptions that may be found to cause offense to some. That's not really the way the law is phrased, though, from what I've read. Listen, I'm not trying to give Kanokin you a hard time, per se. I am a little skeptical of what they're saying, to be honest, because this doesn't add up. And I don't know who... I, I don't know what's really going on here. And I kind of do feel like they are trying to play the middleman or something. Not really play the middleman, but, you know, play both sides of the fence, so to speak. So they say, we import them into Australia to sell them to you. We are considered to be responsible for ensuring that they are submitted to the board. That makes sense from what we read. 
But in order to have them classified, we would need to pay a fee for each title, the cost of which made the process price prohibitive for us. This is where I really feel some heat for Kenokin you here, man. Not in a good way. And listen, the, I, I could go on a macro level and say, uh, again, the issue might just be the system in Australia is really complicated and expensive and clunky for these retailers to go through. But still, this really comes off like they skipped a step and, you know, they, they basically, they're saying they kind of skipped a step to cut costs. So they might have opened themselves up to legal liability and that's why they bent the knee to these politicians, so to speak. Um, I guess they could, you know, here's a hypothetical for you. While they're not required to submit things to the board, the law may be phrased in the way that they are required to assess the material. And when these politicians saw the material, this is again a hypothetical, maybe they, you know, rose an argument like anyone who would assess this material in a reasonable manner would know that it is not uh, allowed for sale here. And that's where they might, might have gone some legal trouble if the law sided with that take. Uh, if the law saw the material in this case, like Iromaga Sensei or whatever, and said, yeah, if they actually did a fair assessment of this work, you know, and submitted it to the classification board, we would have struck it down, but they didn't submit it to the classic classification board. And clearly they should have. So now they're going to be in some trouble. And especially when they are making public tweets saying that they had an issue with the, 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 the price being prohibited for for them, uh, you know, uh, proceeding forward in that manner excuse me again trying to phrase this all properly while not really having a full grasp of australian law and that's even putting it nicely again more of a rudimentary grasp not even a full full grasp or whatever but the point is i think you can see what i'm getting at it seems like kanoke you kind of you know it seems like they're playing both sides of the fence but they're also stuck between a rock and a hard place they want to sell these things in australia australia is being a bit uh difficult for them so they're trying to kind of play both sides a little bit that's my vibe that's the vibe i'm getting I don't think we need to really read the rest of this. Let's skim through it, though. The board have actually been very supportive in guiding us through the process. Right. Yeah. Kiss up to the board there a little bit as they make your life more difficult. Again, both sides to me. Indicate that some of the titles would likely be fine for unrestricted sale. Others might have restrictions apply and very few would be refused classification. I think I really did solve the thing here, man. My hypothetical seems pretty, pretty high, uh, high percentage for that to be the case here, in my opinion. I'm not going to read the rest of this. I, we've already read the whole thing, and I think I kind of... I think I'm going to settle with that, in my opinion. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my take. If you watch the full video, I'm really curious what you all think about this topic. That's the conclusion I'm at right now. And who knows? Maybe I'll follow this up. Interesting stuff overall, though, man. Weird, weird, weird situation. Again, I could be totally wrong. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Look forward to seeing what you all have to say. Catch you in a few hours for the next one.